How are you, buddy? I'm doing well, thanks. How are you? Yeah, pretty good, man. Pretty good. Thank you for taking some time to join us. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me on. This will be o- fun. Olympic bronze medalist. That <laughs> has got a good ring to it, doesn't it? Certainly, uh, certainly better than a uh, two-time Olympic fourth placer. <laughs> Yeah, no doubt, man. Uh, you know, of course, everybody's super proud of you being a local guy here in, uh, in the lower mainland. Um, how, how long have you been taking, you know, race walking training seriously? I've, I've been doing this since I was 10 years old. Um, you know, I growing up, I was the shortest kid in the class, red curly hair, big thick glasses. I was that quintessential kind of nerdy kid. And I really want to be good at something. And uh, my elementary school, had a little popsicle stick run, you run a lap the field, get a popsicle stick tried that figured there's no balls that can hit me in the face and break my glasses. And (laughs) sure enough, had some pretty good endurance. And a year later, serendipitously fell into this race walking thing after uh, my brother was trying it. And as the younger brother being like, if he can do it, it's gotta be easy. And sure enough, you know, won my first race and was 10 year old Evan was just like, yeah, this is the thing that I'm going to go to the Olympics in. And so what's behind you? I'm, I'm seeing there's a Canada shirt here. There's a, the, the Dunphy tag. Is this from the from this Tokyo Olympics? Uh, this is from Rio, actually. Yeah. So okay. I, had, I had an old Boston Bruins jersey um, signed by the whole team that kind of didn't really have much sentimental value to me anymore. <laughs> and right. uh, and was like, well, I have this frame. I may as well put something in it. So. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. And so yeah. you say you started at about 10. Uh, so this is your third Olympics second or sorry your second olympics will will you be able to do a third do you think or like what what's like is there a point where you get too old for for a race walk like what's the what's the longevity for that well unfortunately i i've outlived my event um so the 50k race walk is actually done now the the ioc has gotten rid of it um yeah it's uh it's unfortunate. It's the only event in track and field that uh, at the Olympics that doesn't have a women's equivalent. Um, and instead of adding the women's event, like we've been pushing for for years, they decided that they'll just take away the men's event. Oh, that's weird. Um, so it's a little bit unfortunate, but it's certainly an event where longevity is possible. I mean, we had a we had a 52 year old competing in in Rio uh, in his or sorry in Tokyo in his. Uh, eighth olympics um wow. so it's it's certainly an event where you could keep going for a really long time if uh, uh if you wanted to I, I don't think i'd ever want to be be that be that i don't think i have the mental fortitude that he has to keep doing it for that long but right um you know i'm certainly looking towards maybe stepping down to the shorter distance we have a 20k as well so maybe step down to that for the paris games and take one last crack at uh uh it's sort of olympic uh cycle yeah yeah and so you've only been home from uh from the tokyo olympics for a few days so what are the things that stand out from your time there um yeah it's it's really tough like going into the games in this environment obviously there was a lot of uncertainty about what it would look like and and how safe it would be and um you know a big thing for me was just understanding that it was going to be a different Olympics for the people of Tokyo. Um, you know, the Olympics are a multi-billion dollar price tag that are left upon a city. Um, and going into the game, it was a city that didn't want to host them. You know, the majority of Tokyo residents were against the games happening. So I was really kind of conscious of that and knowing that I was kind of going into, you know, going into Tokyo is a bit of a, intruder almost Mm -hmm. um so what's been really interesting to see is is how the city and 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 the country seemed to uh you know at least from what from my perspective what i could see seemed to rally behind the games once they started and and rally behind the athletes and the stories and 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 find the positive in it um and then yeah to come home and, and to hear that team canada had zero um zero positive cases within our within our bubble and, and to know that we kept it safe. And, and that means that we're, we'll have kept, uh, you know, the residents of Tokyo safe and all that. It's, it's a, it's a nice feeling. Cause it was, there was a, all those things were sort of uncertain um, when I was heading there. So um, there's a bit of a re- relief and a bit of uh, gratitude, I guess, coming home are probably the two biggest feelings. Interesting. Now, so they didn't want to host it. It was, was it COVID related? Like what were the restrictions like over there 
were, were people still wearing masks and was, was there still that kind of yeah so i mean tokyo itself was still under a state of emergency um uh means a little bit different there than it does here it basically meant that bars have to close at 8 p.m <laughs> you know it's a it's a little bit less drastic than, than our state of emergencies were but um you know their vaccination rates are incredibly low um and and with the restrictions in place meant empty stadiums it meant, um, you know, yeah, not getting that. that same return on on the investment of, of hosting Olympic Games that that you normally get. Um, so it was completely understandable. I, I, you know, I fully understood where, um, you know, where the citizens were coming from. So, um, you know, I, I really do hope that, uh, you know, there was positive value taken away. I know all the volunteers that I talked to took took a tremendous uh, amount away with them and. Um, we've seen that in Vancouver. I mean, you still see in Vancouver all the people walking around in their in their volunteer jackets, and and they're like this own their own little community of that still get together, that still um, have become sort of lifelong friends, and and have that um, passion and love for sport that that they go off and they do other volunteer stuff in their community, and, and they're a huge positive impact. So hopefully, the same thing can be will be seen with uh, with all the Tokyo volunteers. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Now, had you ever been to Tokyo prior to the Olympics, and was there like a huge um like cultural difference did you notice anything like that yeah i've been to tokyo uh before and i absolutely loved it as a city um this time around was you know there was no there was no movement you know we were in our bubble um so that meant going from the olympic uh venues to our to our residences and and that was pretty much it um wow. there was there was no outside movement whatsoever mm. okay interesting uh and back to your race like 50k that that's like walking to Abbotsford or, or further. Like how do you practice walking yeah, I mean, for that to, distance? Like, what do you I'll, just go out and walk? Pretty much. Yeah. Just lots of walking. You know, I, I'll put in 150 to 180 K a week uh, here in Richmond and just around, around the streets. And, and one of the really cool things about race walking is that I'm very visible in my community. Not only am I doing uh, a, a movement that's, that stands out. It's very easy to spot the race walker, yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm out <laughs> on the streets. You know, we have so many amazing athletes here in the lower mainland, but so many of them, you know, whether it's training indoors in pools or whether it's training in a gym or in a warehouse somewhere. And, and, and I get to be out on the streets interacting in my community in that really um, front facing way. So that was really cool. Cause it was last. Oh, you're just black we're stuck at home and normally be off at training camps with with teammates and stuff and but being here in richmond it was really cool to have that support every single day i stepped outside i had people honking their horns cheering for me shouting go evan go and um that was just really spurred me on but um i guess yeah to your original question it's just a lot of walking <laughs> yeah and so uh, you like your race was actually quite close you almost didn't get the medal <laughs> So how do you know, like, do you have somebody in your ear or is there somebody on the sidelines? Like, go, Evan, go. You're really close. Because, dude, it was super close. One through four was like. Yeah. So well, the, the nice thing is we compete on a two kilometer loop. Um, so unlike the marathon where uh, you kind of, just, you know, you go off, you, you, you run for 42K and you start somewhere and you finish somewhere. We okay. just do 25 laps around a, a two kilometer loop. So you can always see where your competitors are and have that sense wow. of, of how the race is unfolding. Um, so that's helpful, but certainly going into that final lap with 2K to go, I think I was 18 seconds back of, of third place. And, um, and uh, I was set, actually sitting in fifth place at that point. I was, you know, still had a couple of guys to get ahead of and, it was funny because the guy that finished and was just ahead of me was the guy that beat me at world champs a couple of years ago by two seconds. Oh, okay. So my first thought was, okay, just, I can't lose to, I can't use the yell again by, you know, by two seconds, get past him. And so I put my head down and I, I sort of you know, was managed to get past him. And then I was, was like, Oh crap. I'm in fourth again. Oh, come on. I mean, you can't finish fourth again. So <laughs> it's kind of like, it was that, that there was that weird self-talk that was kind of like, very me of like it was kind of uh you know self-deprecating but still incredibly motivating to to yeah. kind of like oh okay no i can't do this again all right you know refocus put your head down and, and figure this out and yeah i didn't pass the third place athlete until about 200 meters like, to go right there dude yeah i'm watching it on the, on the tv as it's unfolding like so 
uh, how far when you're like, okay, I got to pass buddy. I'm not going in fourth again. Like just visually explain like how far away he was from you at that point where you're like, I'm, I gotta, I gotta cash this guy. Yeah. So coming towards the last, uh, maybe 800, 900 meters was kind of, I had been real, I'd been asking my body for a little bit more, um, for many kilometers at that point, I was kind of on the edge with, with, uh, my hamstring was kind of cramping and I just kept asking my body for just, you know, give me a little bit more, give me a little bit more. And it wasn't, it was sort of saying, Nope, this is your limit. This is your limit. And <laughs> with like 800 meters to go finally, you know, whatever it was, I, I was really just thinking back to all my friend, my friends and family at home who were walking every step of the way with me. And whatever it was in that moment just gave me that next extra gear where my body just said, okay, go. Um, and so from there, it was, it was never really even, I, I don't remember what was going through my head. I just remember sort of seeing uh, the athlete from Spain come around the, the top bend and thinking, oh, he's, I can catch him. Like, like he's not that far ahead and, and coming around that, that top bend and just booking it for the finish line. And, and remembering, I, the one thing I remember is how close the, the finish line looked at that point. And I was like, oh, I'm going to, do I have enough room? Am I going to be able to make this? Like, and then once I got by, I'm thinking, oh good, that finish line's really far away, <laughs> way still. It was, you know, that foreshortening effect looking down straight at it. I was thought it was way closer than it was. And, um, and once I actually moved into, uh, to third, I kept, I remember thinking, oh, there's still, I still have like 200 meters left. Like I have plenty of space. <laughs> Right, right. And meanwhile, the people ahead in one and two, they're like right close too. So you pretty much walk, watch those guys walk through to gold and silver, right? Yeah, the whole race. I mean, it's amazing how a three hour and 50 minute race can come down to That's seconds, you know, less than a second per kilometer. Um, yeah. It's it's insane that the guy that won the race at one point had like a three minute lead. Um, and he saw that evaporate down to about 30 seconds, 40 seconds in the end. So, um, wow. that's what I love about the 50 K event is that it's really not over until it's over. So much can happen. And, um, you can think that you're doing fine. And a kilometer later, your body can be completely shutting down on you. So, yeah. um, it, it, it keeps it exciting. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, are, are there any other sports that you're maybe not Olympic level at, but are, are there other sports where you're pretty good at? Uh, I mean, I, I still play, I play urban rec ball hockey. Um, okay. Just, I, I, I love the, you know, love getting out there and, and playing around growing up. We were, you know, street hockey fiends, just playing eight hours a day, every, every day in the summer. And, and right, grew up playing. so, it, you know, I, I know that it's one of those things I can't live without. Um, so I'm really excited to be able to get back to that once, uh, once urban rec starts back up again and, and get out there and, uh, you know, fool around with, uh, with my teammates and have some fun. And, and I think we have a championship to defend as well. So, you know, got to set my sights on that. Nice. Nice. Uh, Evan, I'd love to get outside of the uh, Olympics race walking and what you're known for. What's, what's the music like in the Dunphy house as a kid growing up? Like what are your, what are the uh, you bands know, your parents are playing? <laughs> as a kid growing up, it was eclectic. Uh, you know, my dad influenced us from, uh, you know, from System of the Down uh, all the way towards, well, my mom was a big Proclaimers fan. So 500 miles, um, I want to be, was, <laughs> was uh, you know, was actually, like, even before I race walked, my mom's favorite song. So that got played a lot. Leonard Cohen was, uh, you know, was was on in the background of the household a lot. And, um, you know, now I find myself listening to <laughs> a little bit more towards, you know, Taylor Swift and that sort of thing. But okay. um, I, I, I still, if I ever need to put a playlist on, it's going back towards that like late nineties, early two thousands, um, just alt rock, our lady peace, um, tragically hip, like that sort of Canadiana, um, is sort of that, that go-to. Yeah. It's like comfort music. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That and a bowl of craft dinner. And, and I feel like a kid again. <laughs> nice. uh, what was your first concert you went to? I was pretty late to the game. It was, um, it was a red hot chili peppers concert in oh, wow. 2010. Um, my, uh, my mom had, uh, my mom's company had corporate had box seats and, and she was, uh, kind enough to lend them to three of my friends, three of my 20 year old friends. And, um, nice. yeah, we didn't get invited back. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. That was probably a fun night then. 
<laughs> it, I, I'm I'm sure it probably was. You're like, I think I remember it being. Yeah. Uh, what have you been binge watching lately? Uh, Ted Lasso is sort of the last thing that so uh, funny. we watch. It's just amazing. It's just I just haven't seen anything like that in, in so long. So yeah, been really enjoying that. And Sudeikis and I is mean, such a funny guy, though. Like everything he does is pretty gold. Yeah, just fantastic. And and up and just feel good. Like it's just one feel of those good, ones yeah. you just watch it and you just can't you just find yourself smiling the entire time. Yeah, totally um, funny show. Yeah. And then obviously I just was in Olympic mode. Um so yeah. I watched, you know, I was watching everything. I, I really enjoyed the skateboarding. That was cool. First first time yeah, skateboarding right? in the Olympics. And like and, if you had a told you know, my 16, 17, 18 year old self where I was fully immersed in that world as a kid that that would be an Olympic sport. I've been like, come on, that's not going to ever happen. My, my favorite thing about skateboarding in the Olympics is, you know, skateboarding, it's, you know, it's born out of counterculture. And a few years ago, there was a pretty, pretty hefty fight over which international governing body got to be the governing body for skateboarding. Right. <laughs> it just felt like the most like, all right, you've, you've, this has gone full circle. Totally. <laughs> you're now fighting over who gets to govern you. Um, but it was so exciting and seeing, it was so cool. Cause you just had every single, especially watching the women's um, the park. And it was just like, every girl was there supporting, you know, their competitors when they hit a trick, when they missed a trick, they were just one big sort of team from all around the world. And that was so cool to see. Yeah. I wonder when that will change. Cause eventually that's got to change, right? Like first year, hell they're, they're going to be all about it, but eventually like say, four or five games from now there's probably going to be some adversity there's going to be some you know like i'd love to watch her fall kind of thing or maybe not maybe we'll yeah, never be I, you like know that. race walking the 50k race walk's been in the olympics since uh 1932 and and i think we're still one big happy family i we go um you know, i have training partners from all around the world we'll gather in australia but uh, oh. back when when we were when we were able to yeah. um and, and bring guys from 15 different countries, um, together to train together. So, you know, I think there are a lot of those sports that kind of fly under the radar, um, still do have that, uh, really sort of genuine international companionship to them. Right. That's pretty cool. Uh, do you get into like, um, superhero stuff like WandaVision and Batman and all that shit? I'm so uh, like for someone who has the attention span to walk 50 kilometers, <laughs> I don't have the attention span <laughs> to, to, to watch movies. And, and, and uh, I've, I'm the kind of person as well. I'm so meticulous that I'm always like, if I'm going to do something, I need to start from the beginning and the whole Marvel and DC universes are just way too oh, overwhelming to like, I, I can't bring myself to know where to even start. So right. I need someone to curate, <laughs> curate <laughs> a, a program for me. All right, exactly. Uh, what's the worst job you've had? Oh, yeah, I've I've been immensely privileged that um, that I've kind of, you know, I <laughs> I don't know what I don't know how else to say it other than I grew up in a middle class household where I didn't have to I had the luxury of not having to work in high school and um, went straight to university and and basically since university I've been doing this race walking thing and and making a full-time career out of that. So, um, yeah, I've, I'm one of the lucky ones where I've, I've never had a job I didn't like. Wow. Wow. Who's the most famous person that you've met? Oh, um, Joe Thornton is my second cousin. Nice. Um, so that's really, really cool. So we used to get to go to, to games and, uh, go down to the dressing room. And, and when he was, uh, training with team Canada before the 2000, six Olympics. Uh, we got to go and meet, uh, yeah, I got to meet Steve Eiserman and, uh, Sackick and, uh, took an elevator of Wayne Gretzky and all that stuff. So, so for 16 year old Evan, that was the coolest thing imaginable. That's totally cool. So are you a big hockey fan, obviously with playing, you know, with the boys and stuff, but are you like, you, are you, when, when I don't, the Canucks are playing, it's, it's game on. I don't watch so much anymore. Um, I, I just, because I travel so much, um, a lot of the time I'm, I'm not here for most of the season and, and then can't really get my head into it. So, um, I've definitely fallen off. I'm definitely someone who I will play any sport. Um, and I will watch any sport if it matters. So playoffs, I'll watch world championship darts. I will, you know, if right, it's right. a game that matters, 
exciting um, sports yeah i will i will watch it but regular season stuff where it's just kind of going through the motions and that i can't bring myself these days yeah yeah uh it's a loaded question but where do you see yourself in in five years so my biggest priority now is just finding ways to be able to provide positive value back to my community. So um, I have no idea what that looks like yet, but certainly I'm, I've been toying with running for city council here in Richmond next year, oh. um, or walking for city council, I guess. Um, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and uh, just, uh, just trying to find ways that I can kind of use my platform to, to, to help, to, to be a positive influence here and, and create value. So um, whether it's doing that, whether it's continuing to volunteer with organizations like kids sport, um, continue race walking, you know, maybe head towards, towards pet, maybe head towards Paris and, and the next Olympics. And, you know, that a lot of options, a lot of doors that are open for me right now. So I'm going to take some time, see where the body, how the body feels, see how the mind feels, and then, um, kind of make a decision from there. Right. And if, and when you go to Paris, it will be the 20 K. The 20 K. Yeah. So stepping down in distance, a little bit of a sprint. <laughs> it feels weird yeah. to say that, yeah, um, yeah. but, uh, so we'll have to see, we'll have to see if my, my heart's in it the same way. I love the 50 K. The 50 K is just this grind, this journey. Um, I mean, and just thinking about it, like I said, it's like walking to Abbotsford. Yeah. Yeah. I've done and I, like I'll, one of my main training routes will be to walk from here in Richmond, uh, out around Stanley park and back home. And that's like, <laughs> you know, that's a, that's a nice morning's morning's walk sometimes. And how long would that take you? Something like that? Uh, about three, three and a half, just under three and a half hours. Okay. Wow. And do, do any of your friends ever walk with you? Uh, so I've, I've been able to get uh, my girlfriend on the bike. So she'll bike with me um, a little bit and I've had friends that will come and run with me. So um right. it's been good they're, they're not to, walking they're running to keep up. they're running yeah yeah so we've had i've had two 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 we've had three olympians from vancouver here that um we all competed in rio in race walking and, and have since gone on to retire so one's now working as a lawyer and one's doing his phd at harvard and you know they're much smarter than i am so i'm the one who's still race walking <laughs> but uh <laughs> awesome. since they retired i've had a lot of friends who have filled that teammate teammate void by coming out and running with me that's awesome. Dude, thank you again for taking the time to jump on the podcast here. Uh, you're easy to find online. It's just simply your name, Evan Dunphy. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it always pops up. It's uh, nice and unique and yeah. Yeah, made getting those handles, handles achievable. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Well, um, congrats again on the bronze medal, uh, the Tokyo Olympics. We'd love to see, of course, compete in the 2024 Paris Olympics. Uh, I guess it would be the 20K and we'll be rooting for you then too as well. Yeah, thanks so much, Todd. It was a pleasure. Awesome, Evan. Nice to meet you, and uh, I guess we'll see you online. Sounds good. Okay, thanks, man. Have a great day. You too. Cheers. Take care. Bye.